Hey Geeks, welcome back to the Geek Center Show. I'm Josh. I'm Anna. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Exandria Unlimited Calamity Part 1. So if you haven't seen it yet and you want to avoid any spoilers, skip this video and come back later because everything we say from this point forward is going to be a spoiler. Whew, okay. <laughs> this thing started off like the most tense opening for a game ever yeah with that nightmare oh my god yeah and, and it wasn't clear like at first that it was a dream no it like, wasn't like it, it felt it felt like we were starting like in the midst of yeah, the calamity that's what i was like oh, okay okay this is how they're doing the calamity in four episodes it's already happening and we're yeah. just gonna see the battle that was my thoughts until um the little boy was fishing in a pool of stars and i was like, like oh, okay yeah it, okay now this this is a dream this mm -hmm. is a dream okay but before then and, i thought that's where we were and, starting and i've i've never played in or watched a D, D campaign that started at level 14 that started at, at a high level and they really went about this uh in, in kind of the only way you can uh, from what I read, uh, they, they all got together, the players got together as a group, and they created their characters together. Yes, and so they talked. They, to. they talked about all their backstories and their backgrounds and their relationships to each other and everything, and so they sorted all of that stuff out so that there, there's not going to be, like, a bunch of, like, character arcs and mm -hmm. reveals, like, oh, you're so-and-so's, you know... Yeah, well, that's, that's not what this is about. No, This no. is about portraying an event yeah. in Matt's... Alexandrian history and and that's the thing i was really a little bit concerned when they announced this because i'm like all right this is role playing and leaving up to chance something that has already happened in matt's lore mm -hmm. so what if the dice don't do what the dice mm -hmm. need to do for the thing to happen I mean, we haven't really gotten very far. Yeah. We've met all the characters. They had a, a gala, and uh, there was one very brief combat. Yeah. And, and that was kind <laughs> of it. So I'm still a little bit concerned about how this is going to work out, um, how they're, they're going to avoid breaking Matt's lore. Yeah. But, I mean, from this first episode, there is no better DM for this than Brennan. Oh, my None. God, no. So... We don't have a whole lot of experience with Dimension 20. Yeah. Um, I watched one, the first season of the one where they're in high school and like one's a werewolf and one's sister hates her. Um, I, I can't, I don't, I, like Fantasy High, I think is what it was called. That sounds right. Yeah. I watched one season of that and I enjoyed it, but not as much as I enjoyed Critical Role because I don't like the... Um, the production stuff afterwards that they add in yeah. the voice um, modulation and yeah stuff like that. yeah yeah i don't enjoy that i like watching an actual game just unfold in front of me that's mm -hmm. what i enjoy so i didn't like that as much so i didn't although i did recognize that he was a good dm i didn't realize how great a dm mm -hmm. he was until it wasn't even 10 minutes in and i was like holy fuck he's he's amazing yeah and, and I'm right there with you. I, I have the same thing with Dimension 20. It feels like a show as opposed to a game. Yeah. And it is a game, but it feels like a show. Yeah. And it's just, that, that's just not what I'm looking for in a D&D &D stream. That said, I'm going to give it another shot. Yeah. Because yeah. Brennan is phenomenal. We got to talk about the characters. So <laughs> they're, they're, they're not playing like the historical characters that we know, like Pervon. Yeah. Right? They're not playing those characters. These are uh, new characters. I guess. I think so. I, and it's that a, feels right. Like, yeah. Because if they played established characters, then that would be Matt telling them this is what this character is. Because Matt has oodles of right. lore and information. And then the fact and that they, they sat down and created characters. These are yeah. characters who at least we don't have the history of yet. Yes, so that exactly. does kind of make things a little bit yeah. easier as far as not Which breaking Matt's lore. doesn't mean that their histories can't come up in future campaigns. Oh, totally yeah, good. and Matt could absolutely reference one of the characters from this mm -hmm. this mini campaign um, in campaign three very easily. Um, my favorite character um, so far, Travis's character. His character's name is Serret, and um, he is a when Eric Kokra or Eric Kokra, but it's called something different. Ice, Ice Fiera. 
um, which is the, the, the Birdman. Yeah. He's a he's he's a rogue Birdman, and it's amazing. And a lot of DMs won't allow that particular race in their campaigns because they get some racial abilities that make them a little bit overpowered at lower levels. At level 14, I don't think it matters <laughs> at all. I think yeah. all bets are off once you get that high. You know, it's a race I don't think I would have considered before, but now, like, how Travis is playing with the him, <laughs> yeah, with the, with the, the feathers poofing out. Yeah. I don't like birds. I really don't like birds. Anything that flies, yeah. Yeah, I don't like flying things. So, um, the, the feathers the crest poofing out and then like flinging the uh, wings out like mm -hmm. the way he's describing it and using that for his character and the personality is just mm -hmm. it's so good and and, and this uh, well first of all who, who's your favorite character so oh Lucretius Lucretius I knew it I knew it was going to be Sam's character yeah I, it, it was Sam hadn't even finished the description of his character the art pops up during his description I was like I've had him for five seconds, and I will die for him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, as, um, as soon as yeah, Sam started just, describing uh, the character, I was like, he's going to be a bard. And then it came up, and I was like, oh, he's, he's, a, he's a bardlock, right? Yeah. He's a bard warlock. Um, he, yeah, he's a bardlock. He's a bardlock. Yeah. He's I, Sam. I cannot wait <laughs> to see the, the mechanics that Sam uses for this, for this bardlock. Because you know it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting. Yes. And I, and I, and I think... What little bit that we got to see of, of Sam in this character, I think Sam loves this character. This character, he, he's 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 a newsman, yeah. and he's not only he's not only a newsman, he's the, the newsman, newsman. Yeah. and he's he feels like Scanlan a little more thought out. Yes, yeah, like Scanlan, if um, instead of doing um, cliches, D and D cliches, which was what their whole campaign was based upon. If, if instead of doing that, he had actually put some um, his thought and effort into Scanlan mm -hmm. as opposed to a cliche. And, uh, besides the fact that this character is just over the top and obnoxious, and I love him so much, mm -hmm. he's a changeling, and I've got like this mm -hmm. thing for changelings, but like it's gonna be a hot minute before I ever play a changeling in a campaign because I want a dark history. And it, mm. that's something you gotta clear with not only the DM but the other players and make sure everybody yeah. involved is cool or you gotta know your players well enough to know that they're, they'd be cool with that. But yeah. I have ideas for a changeling. Well, and, and I mean, you've you've already got your character made for my next campaign. Yeah. And you're DMing our next campaign. Yeah, so it's gonna be a while. It's gonna be a bit. It's gonna be a while, but <laughs> I have ideas for a changeling. Absolutely. Um, the other characters, uh, Mar Marisha. Marisha's character... Um, I wasn't sure I was gonna like her at first when she first popped up. I was like, "Oh no!" But then when she started talking to the the older the older uh, mage who came down, I was like, "Okay, no, yeah, I dig this character." Yeah, yeah. Um, that's Apatia. Apatia. Apatia, I think. Yeah. Um, but when she was like standing underneath this massive statue, and it's her grandfather, and. Uh, He's, she's talking to this old man. And he's describing, you know, like what, what this, like the, the creation of the statue, and she's like, he, like the character's humoring him. Like this is a story she's heard before, yeah, definitely. But she <laughs> didn't like, she didn't like shut him down and be like, I've heard this before. Shut the fuck up, yeah. old man. And she is capable of doing that in a polite way because she does that later in the episode, mm -hmm. but she didn't with him because yeah. obviously her character respects this character in yeah. some fashion. Uh, so she allowed him to prattle on, even though it's something she already knew, um, even when she has diplomatic ways of just shutting that down. Mm -hmm. and, and, and she does have, she does shut down quite a few people at the gala. Yes, she like, does. Like, she, she's a little bit bitchy. A little bit, but yeah. But not to everybody. No, no. She's um, one of those socialites who has, like, a persona in front of everybody else, but then get her with her close friends, and, like, she can be her true self yeah. and be happy and not be mm -hmm. this figure. Mm -hmm. And then we have the the, the new players. Abria DM'd, of course, uh, the the first EXU, but uh, her character is uh, Sam's character's ex-wife. <laughs> she fucking love. It's hilarious. I like, love, and you know, I love how Abria is very in character, like a lot, not the whole time, because she's just like squeeing and fangirling over like everything that happens. <laughs> yes, yes, but. When they get to the gala, when Sam is talking as his character and her character is present, she's rolling her eyes and like she is very in her character. And there's a lot of body language like, there. Like, like, like Lucretius, that's a hard name to say. Lucretius brings a date 
-hmm. from Aeor, who is apparently like a giant Russian lady. Yep. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Bria's character, whose name... Um, Laren. Laren. Um, does not like her. No. Immediately. And it's not even that and she it, did anything wrong. No, but it seems bad. like there's a history there because she also doesn't like his assistant. Because remember, the assistant yeah. was sending messages and she oh, refused well, Lucretius to... Lucretius is definitely a player. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't <laughs> think Sam's going to stray too far away from the horny bard. <laughs> he's definitely, he's definitely going to go there yeah. again. There was Nidus. Nidus is an awesome character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, okay, so... I don't uh, know the, the player from anything else. Um, I am unfamiliar with him. But on my server, there was a lot of chat about um, him playing a pirate at some point or something like that. So I think... To his backstory. Well, I know it's this character's backstory, but mm -hmm. I guess, they're, I, I guess they're, they're, they were saying like it's... Oh, he had played a pirate. He had played campaign. a pirate in another campaign, and this is like a fully fleshed out version of that character, okay. or inspired by that character, or something like that. I don't know. I have no clue because I, I've never seen him in anything. But I'm digging him as uh, the character art is phenomenal. Yeah, so yeah, good. and I, I love. Oh man, he is doing such a good job of pulling off the um, arrogant, cocky businessman who's fucking failing, like. Because, like, there was a, a few lines in there that makes you think, like, things are not as good as he projects to the public in his business venture. Mm -hmm. He is having some struggles. He's having money problems. Um, but in front of the public, it's fine. It's, it's you know, he, he can play it off as if it's... And he's doing a great job of playing that part. That's, like, a very specific part, and he's doing it so and, well. And he had this interaction with the Sphinx... Oh yeah, <laughs> and and then when he went to the gala, he brought like seven hundred automatons with him. Yeah, and, and, and the tree. And and, and I, I think um, the player misspoke there. I don't think he meant to bring seven hundred automatons with him. I don't know what he meant to do, but he yeah, brought seven hundred like scarecrow automatons. Yeah, I, he might have because like metallic he, scarecrows. he brought a tree and they had to carry the tree. Yeah, but seven hundred yeah, is a lot. lot. Yeah. I don't know if he meant 700 or if he... Well, he did say later in the episode, he's like, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, well, that's when they started, when he thought they were going to turn against him. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, shit, what did I do? Yeah, because the, 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 the one, like, malfunctioned. <laughs> yeah, and, boom, yeah. fell apart. But yeah, it's like these grandiose gestures so that people don't suspect that there's problems. It's, it's super, super well-developed for a four-part mm -hmm. campaign. I, I love it. I, I, he was obviously put a whole lot of thought into this character. Mm -hmm. And uh, Xerxes, the paladin. Hmm. I, I can't, I, I don't know if it's just my ears, but I kept I kept hearing Xerxes. Yeah, they were saying his name. <laughs> but, uh, but it's spelled Xerxes. And I think it's supposed to be Xerxes, not Xerxes. Yeah, I have no idea. But, uh, but... I love paladins. Paladins are my go-to class. And what's kind of funny is uh, Xerxes looks kind of like his paladin did yeah, it my, from our first campaign our, our first uh campaign my, my paladin was christoph was his name yeah and, and it he was very long similar. black hair black beard the only difference was my paladin had very light blue eyes mm -hmm. and his paladin has dark eyes yeah that was the otherwise they yeah, are they were, twins yeah <laughs> like the, the the picture on there kind of looks like his mini <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah. Very much looks like his mini. And the, the the really brief combat was I first of all I, I gotta talk about Brennan again here because the way he described like how um Sarah perceived this yes. invisible person in the room. And, and 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 basically he made it scientifically this is why you can see this invisible yeah. creature. Because there's gotta be a little bit of the eye that's not invisible because the light has to be able to hit it. Otherwise you would be blind when you're invisible. Mm-hmm. And that's that's a genius way to handle it. Yeah. And he, he rolled a thirty-one. Travis rolled really high this episode. All of them did. Really. Yeah. I mean, there was only like well, two. You're, level fourteen. Yeah, it's level almost 14, impossible yeah. not to roll. You roll a two. Unless, like yeah, sixteen. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, just he caught like the glare off of that little little smaller than a grain of sand pinpoints yeah. in the eyes, and then those axes came out and he only did twenty-five points of damage. But it was enough to kill whoever that was. Yeah. Well, it's because that wasn't a warrior. I think that was a spy. And, and, and it was like a difference. stitched together humanoid. Yeah. It was creepy as Very fuck. Very creepy, yeah. Um, but like, 
there, there's a lot of instances um, where the player succeeds on something and you have to think on your feet, okay, how did they succeed on this? And there are a number of ways they could do it, um, you know, with, with the investigation, a 31 investigation. Um, he could have heard a shuffle of feet and knew the general direction an, an of it. An exhale or something. Yeah, he, or a, an exhale. Or he could have seen the curtain move just slightly mm -hmm. enough to indicate. Like, there were so many ways he could have described it. And he chose a way that I never would have even thought of. It's what I'm going to use. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if one of y'all rolls high enough on something like that, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm going to use it. It's so good. It's so creative. And and this is something that I don't know if 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 Brennan does this, but it definitely seems like he thinks, okay, so if if I was, you know, what if somebody did roll and was able to per perceive an invisible enemy? How, how, why would they be able to see them? Well, yeah. How does he, how and, do they see them? And, 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 and I'm, th I'm thinking it's something that he's thought of. Mm -hmm. That's not something he came up with like mm -hmm. on the fly. Mm -hmm. He thought of that a while ago. Yeah, like he that. probably has a couple of different scenarios like that where yeah. he he just has, he's thought of how would they do this impossible thing Yeah. Uh, so that he can kind of just jump on it. And I mean, it's obvious he is an experienced DM. He's been doing this for years because mm -hmm. you can't you can't yeah. just do that without it could be experience. something that he picked up from somebody else too. it could be yeah there was a lot of lore in this episode more lore than i can keep up with and i'm gonna have to watch this probably two more times to, to really kind of pick up on it and there was some dialogue that was really kind of challenging to follow particularly near the end mm -hmm. um when they were talking to the the champion of, of the raven queen and he was telling them how uh basically what the, the Raven Queen thinks might have happened, what the gods think might have happened. And um, it was really kind of hard to keep up with. But, I mean, you're, they're, they're, I mean, Brennan's using, like, jargon from a world that doesn't exist. So you've really got to pay close attention and have to know a fair bit um, about the mechanics of D&D &D and the lore of Exandria yeah. to be able to pick up on all this. And I'm going to have to watch it again to get all of it. Yeah, and this is definitely one, like, I will probably go back and read the transcript for this episode so that I can make sure I can read and then process because some of the stuff goes really fast. But, mm -hmm. yeah, like, I, I usually tweet while we're watching, and I did for the first half. I did not for the second half. I was like, that was, it was too much. I felt like I couldn't keep up, so... It's a lot, so lore heavy. But mm -hmm. it, I mean, it has to be. It, it, yeah. make, it makes was, sense for what no they're doing. No way for something yeah. like this to not have it be lore heavy. Yeah. Because it's a campaign, although a short one, about the lore. Yeah. Of the war. So it's establishing uh, it's, the lore it's of the It's going to be just lore drop yeah. on lore drop on lore drop the whole time. And. For me, it's going to be hard to keep up with. I'm going to have to watch it again. And like you, I might have to, to read yeah. the transcript as well. I'm definitely going to. I, I will be rewatching it at least one more time and reading the transcripts because this applies because our next campaign is going to be set in Taldori. So this is our lore for our campaign. Mm -hmm. Although Taldori is called something else. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> All right. This was a pretty long video. Um, I think that's going to be it for it. Um, if we miss something, if there's something you think we should have talked about that we didn't, let us know down in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please let us know by dropping a like on it and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.